Hey everyone, I know I'm a little bit late, but today I found out that one of our favorite cryptid channels, Brenton Sawin's Mysteries to Search, is back up with all his old videos. So I wanted to take the opportunity to go over one of our favorite stories and sort of dig into the idea a bit more from our perspective. We really appreciate Brenton and all the work he did in his life. He was very passionate about the subject and it made his videos really fun and chill to listen to. Big shout out to Summer for opening up the channel again. We really all appreciate it. I highly recommend checking out his channel if you too like to search for mysteries. So let's get started. I think most of us are pretty familiar with the Mothman stories that started becoming popular in the 60s near Point Pleasant, but I don't think it's too crazy of a thought that there could be other creatures with similar characteristics in other places. So let's take a look and listen at Brenton's interview with Debbie from Texas. Today I have someone who is from Texas, her name is Debbie, and she has had an encounter with a strange human bird-like creature, and she really wants to find some other people or some information that, that will help her kind of figure out if anyone else has kind of seen one of these things, and I can really relate to that because I had the same kind of issue when I had an encounter with something that was far different from anything I'd ever heard before. So. I would like for everyone to uh, try to help her uh, um, find what this thing is called or anyone else that might have had an, a similar encounter. So we're going to just go right on to uh, her uh, and, and get her story and we'll let, we'll let her give us a description. Um, so let's just go to our guest, uh, Debbie in Texas. Hello, Debbie. How you doing? Hello. I'm doing good, Brian. All right. I guess yeah. what we'll do is um, you can kind of uh, kind of start out by just telling us, you know, where you live, where you had this encounter, and then just take us through this bird uh, creature encounter and give us like all the detail you can, description and and what have you, and and um, you know, is just as, as best description you can give so that people can completely understand as much as you can do anyway. Uh, and we'll, okay. we'll find you some some similar encounters. All right. Well, um, I live in a in a dense wooded area that's um, got a river that runs down about a mile to the back of our house down here. So um, basically, what we did is we bought uh, fifteen acres, and then we just kind of cut out a spot in the woods and and built our house here and. And, and I wanted it private, so it is very private. <laughs> but I didn't realize when we got here, I didn't realize when we got here that, or moved in here, that it was going to be uh, all kinds of encounters and things that happened down in these woods um, by the river. And I, I've seen some weird stuff, and I've heard some weird sounds out here. And uh, the encounter had, though, have not really been out in here, but one of them I did have that was very strange and that has bothered me since is one on our county road that's about half a mile from our road gate. As you turn off of it, uh, well, I'll just go back to the night that it happened. I was coming in from uh, South Texas. My husband at the time worked on the road uh, pipeline road and we had an RV in South Texas well I would go back and forth to visit him it's a long drive so I would come in and I'd be so ready for the country and you know my house my peaceful place and so I always had a kind of a routine I'd come down the highway and as I was coming and turning off of our county road um, I would always roll the window down and put some old rock and roll on and I would uh, enjoy the the smells, you know, of the country and everything and, and the music. And I would just ride real slow till I got to my road gate. And as I turned there, though, there's a there's a ranch that starts there, and it's called Lamb Ranch. Well, anyway, it has a, a tower there. It's a big water tower. And uh, I was talking to my aunt on the phone, and I remember the time because I looked at it, and it was 11 o'clock. I said, I'm going to let you go. I kind of feel to her. I was trying to get off the phone. I told her I was in my driveway, but I, I just wanted to get off the phone so I could enjoy my little half mile. And uh, But this time ends up being important. 
Right. I hung the phone. I always carry my, uh, I've got a, a Smith & Wesson, you know, a gun. I carry it with me on this trip, and I had it in, right there, laying by my lap. And also, my, I keep it laying right there, and my cell phone. I had put it down, and I just wanted to, in, you know, relax a minute. And so I heard this noise as I was coming down the road. And I looked to the left and at that water tower, and I saw something. Even though it was 11 o'clock at night, I could see. It was, I don't know if it was the moon or if it was just a glow around it or what, but I could see what was going on up there, and it shocked me. I saw what in the world, because I've never seen anything on that water tower ever. And I saw these bird-looking creatures, big ones, They were in a circle, going around in a circle on the top of the tower, doing this chant. I heard them before I saw them, and then I looked up and I saw them. Just wow. a second after I was trying to figure out what it was, I, like I said, I had my window down. I had stopped. I didn't even have my car in park. I had just had my foot on the brake. And I... While I was looking, all of a sudden, this creature appeared right there on the road, right beside my car, in my car window. My goodness. And it talked me to no end. I, I mean, it, it, it freaked me out because I thought, what? I didn't even know what to think. And this creature was, it did not fly, even though they, it had wings. It didn't fly off of that tower. It just, like, it appeared right there. I didn't see it fly because I was looking at the tower the whole time. And I did see one that was taller. It was a, one of the winged creatures that was taller than the others. Right. About a foot no taller. Yeah. And uh, he was the, it was the one, and I say he because it looked male to me in feature. But right. this is the best I can describe this is that it was a male creature with a white face. The face, it had black eyes, no no pupil. I couldn't even see a pupil. It was just black eyes. It had a solid white face like you would paint, like a clown face, like you would paint it. Mm -hmm. And then it had uh, a square kind of looking mouth, but the lips were uh, almost cherry red. It was almost like the art that you see where people will paint their face white right. and do the you know, like that, with the black eyes and the uh, lips. It was, it was like that. And it had wings, though, that came all the way down to its ankles. I remember that. They were huge, huge wings. And they were soft-looking, very feathery. Um, and it had it, it had it all over its body. It wasn't just the wings. Because I was such in shock. I really wish I would have looked more to see what, it looked like, but, and I was staring straight at it, but mostly in its face because it was down under my car, you know, the other part of the body of it was under my car window, you know, so I, I, I was too scared to look down, you know, mm -hmm. I just was sitting there. Well, I can hear you really well. If you want to start, start, uh, pick it back up at the vehicle when this thing comes down onto the road and you uh, see it and you start the description over from there okay okay well when I heard the chanting up there of course I was trying to figure out what it was and I'm, I'm got my foot on the brake but I never even put my car in the park and I'm looking up at the tower at these big birds uh doing this flopping and chanting and kind of like a, a well, it, it, it impressed me as right off the bat, something evil. Well, all of a sudden, you know, this creature appears in my window at the car. It didn't fly, it just appeared. And it didn't say anything, it just looked at me, and I mean, it was close. I'm talking about it peered into my window. My window was open. I had to kind of move my head back to get away from it. And it had hands like a human. It was a human body. I'm just going to say it was a human man, but it had wings and feathers. Oh, um, was the feathers all over the body? Huh? Was the feathers like all over the body? Yes. The feathers were all over the body. 
and the wings were huge, and they were all they were so cold black, it was almost a bluish looking color, and they were soft looking. You could tell it was a soft feathery. It, so, so and, the color of the whole creature was black. Yes, the whole creature was black except for its face. Its face was white, solid white, like a like a geisha like girl. Painted white, but. It wasn't. It was almost. It was like these clowns that you see with this white face makeup. You know that has the the ruby red lips right. and black eyes. That's what it looked like. The face of it did. Okay. And the head part. I keep going in, over in my mind trying to figure out what the top of his head looked like. I didn't see any hair. I don't remember. It was just black. I don't know if it was covered with feathers. Or what? But I don't remember any hair. I don't remember seeing the top of its head, basically, uh, what it looked like, other than just black. And I could see that white face coming at me. And it threw its head back and laughed this evil, throaty laugh. And, of course, I was frozen. I did not. I, my, my phone and my gun was right there, and I could not touch it. I could not touch it. I still had my foot on the brake from my car running. Now, now on the face, to, and now you said it had uh, a paint, it, its face was painted, was there feathers on the face also, or just the face was bare? No. No, its face was bare, and it was just a solid white, okay. like a, a, a white, white, solid face with black eyes and reddish looking lips. Okay. And it smiled, when it smiled, it's, evil looking smile it was had like a big mouth like it smiled all over its face almost and it uh it disappeared so i find it very interesting that the description she's giving is very reminiscent of the clown or the jester or you know some would say the nephilim white face red lips sinister smile very clown joker like and back up on the tower, but I didn't see it fly back up there. It just was back up there. I turned and looked, and that thing and the other birds, the other things was birds, and they did not have a human face. This was the only one that had a human face. The rest of them were just birds. Okay, well, how tall were, were they, though? Abnormal birds. They were abnormally tall, and they had long feathers, like or long wings like that, too that their face was a bird face and they had a white face like his but it, but it was solid feathers and a beak and they had a white uh, breast and he had the white face okay. that was weird, weird and then they they held hands like or kind of got close together and got in this chanting mode again they had stopped when he come down there to me I don't know how I realized it but they had stopped it was quiet. Then when he got back up there, they started doing the same thing they were doing when I had come down the road. This chanting, flopping around like a demonic flop or something. I, I, this way I can describe it is, um, you know, like a voodoo type, trance type thing. Uh, chant, chanting, it's what it seemed like to me they were doing. Like a celebration or victory dance or something. That was that that was in my mind, like impressed in my mind. It was some kind of a celebration or a victory dance. Okay, uh, so 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 no, basically, I, how, how many how many of the birds were there? The bird faced ones, uh, and they were all black with white faces. In some of them had bird faces, and then the white breast on some of them. Did they have arms? The bird ones. No, I couldn't tell anything that they had. Uh, human like except for uh, no they just had big wings I couldn't see no hands or anything it was the tower was you know pretty far away not real far away from me but it was high up too you know but I could just see that they were similar to him but they were birds instead of human <laughs> face they were birds but, you know they had they looked like birds but huge extra 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 huge large birds I've never mm -hmm. seen you know you would never see one of those uh, around here or nothing. And so they were so dancing they were, in a circle on top of this thing. Yeah, they, they got in a semi-circle around. They were on the top of that tower going around and around 
chanting and chanting and flipping and flopping. And they were still there when I drove off. You know, I drove off before I got too far. I stopped my car and I called the our caretaker that was here. And I said, hey, I just experienced something really weird. I said, it scared me so bad. I said, I can't even tell you right now about it. But I said, please, I said, get to the road gate and with the gun and lock the gate behind me. When I get in, I'm going to call the police. And he said, okay. And when I got started coming through the road gate, he said, where have you been? I've been worried sick about you. I said, I just left to come. Well, I just called you. He said, no, you didn't. That was about 45 minutes ago. And I said, no, I just talked to you. And he said, no, you didn't. And so I looked on my phone. And it was 11 when I got off the phone with my aunt. And it was 12 o'clock then. <laughs> so somewhere in there, I lost some time. So this is another very interesting aspect of this situation. Um, she's obviously lost around 40 minutes. She knew what time she was on the phone and she knew what time she got home. She, call she called the caretaker. They had a conversation. She said she'd be there soon. Turns out she gets home and she's 40 minutes late. And this is something we see in what's called today as, you know, UFO alien abduction cases. And uh, since we don't really know what that actually is, I think this is really interesting because it wasn't necessarily a gray or some sort of, you know, common kind of stereotypical alien abduction. Um, it's definitely strange. She's lost time. She saw seen something strange. And she obviously was getting bad vibes from this thing. Um, so it's really weird that uh, this is more of a demonic type encounter, but it has a lot of the same hallmarks as a UFO alien encounter. An hour. Wow. I, yeah, I did not sit there and look at them for an hour. I know I didn't. I mean, you know, I, I don't know. I mean, it was, I can't say how long I sit in that spot, but probably five or ten minutes, maybe. But anyway, I when I got here, uh, you know, we, he got the gate and everything, and I told him to get, bring all the guns out on the porch. <laughs> Yeah, I wanted to watch for this creature. And I, I mean, I'm scared it would follow me, you know? Yeah. And I called the, the police department, or our, our sheriff's department up here, and and she told me she would send an officer out. And I said, well, don't send him to my house, because I want a lot to my road gate. And I'm going to tell you, anything that moves up there is getting shot. I said, so I don't want to shoot an officer. Do not send one down here. I said, you send it to that tower and call me back. And she said, okay. So she called, they called me back. And they said they only saw, the officers went there and saw one blackbird on the tower. And it was just a regular blackbird. Okay. I said, well, well how, 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 tall, how tall were was that thing that was standing beside the car? And then the, it, it well, you said it was a little taller than the other ones. Yes, it was probably about two foot taller than the other ones. It was about six and a half foot, probably tall. Okay. And the other ones were probably maybe four and a half or five foot, something like that. They were, I couldn't really tell how tall they were. They were big. They were probably, I'm five three, so yeah, yeah. they were as tall as me. Yeah, well, you know, that's, least, that's, they that's. They might have been taller because, and he might have even been taller, but I don't think so because uh, he didn't have trouble peering into my window. You know what I mean? It, right. it, he was like a normal sized man, but a tall, a tall, big built man, you know. Okay. So, so, okay. Let me, let me get a gist of this then. So you drive, you're driving down the road, you're getting near your house to turn on to where uh -huh. your, your gates at. Cause you got to, um, do you have like a cattle guard and stuff like that? You cross over? No, we just have a gate that we lock, you know, it's just called our road gate. We, okay. we, right. we I turn off of the main road onto the county road is where that tower is. And then I make another turn onto our private road and then I go about a quarter of a mile and then there's our road gate that we keep open normally. Mm. So but this is close to your house. <laughs> so this is close to your house. It's the water tower that you use, right? It's not a water tower I use. It's the water tower the ranch uses, but yes, it's within walking distance from my house. Okay. Oh, okay, so it's a uh -huh. water tower for the ranch. It's not like a city water tower. 
no, this is way out in the country. Okay. This is way out in the country. So, it's not so like they way out. It's, it's out by the river, but by the Trinity River. So is this one of those water towers that's like the big, um, um, not not super tall like the water towers for a town? This is a water tower that's basically feeding a ranch, right? Exactly, yes. It's a round you know, water tower, it's not a real big one, but it's, you know, it's a normal size water tower. I can't say really how tall it is, but it's got a big, it's round, you know, it's got a big, like, top on it, like the round top, you know, it would, it, okay. it's got a ladder on the side, you know, you could go up there and, I wouldn't, <laughs> I wouldn't okay. do it. Yeah. You do, I would, but so, not so, now. So let's, <laughs> let's okay, let's, let's walk <laughs> through this for a second. Oh, say, say there was maybe, was there four or five of those birds with the bird faces? No, oh, there's about fifteen of them. Oh, really? That many? Goodness. Yeah. And then, and then the there main leader, the little main uh -huh, leader of those birds that had just the, that did not have a human. He was the only one that had a human face. The only one. Okay. So these were fowls of the air. I mean, that's kind of uh, when sometimes the Bible talks about the demonic entities as as fowls of the air. You know. So uh, yeah. in, anyway, that's very interesting. And they were all basically black, except for white faces, and the birds had, like, white on their chest. Yes. Now, the legs uh -huh. on the birds, were those bird legs? So, they, they they basically looked all completely like birds, but really big. But, yeah, and they were standing, though. They were standing on their back, on their legs, though. You know, they're, they were standing up. <laughs> right. Walking. Okay, they so. Were, they looked like buckets, but they were walking. They were dancing. Okay. Did 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 they you know? Dead. Did you oh, notice that they had human like legs or what? Did, uh, did I'm trying to get a picture of how a bird would be dancing? Did did it look more like an upright creature in bird like or did? Um. It was it was an upright. It, okay, it was like okay. So here I'd like to note that the audio does cut out and there's a very strange um glitch kind of sound that happens in this interview. I'm actually just going to skip past that because it's it's really loud and a little a little on the frightening side. So I'm just going to skip ahead. That's crazy. Mm -hmm. That's a very very um evil thing. So so you when you went to your house, um they were still up there doing their dance. Yes. Yeah, I okay. left them. <laughs> All right. Yeah. So so whatever whatever happened, um the police went out there and they didn't see anything but a black bird and then um did did they ever um mess with you at your home after that the police no the birds uh, -huh. uh no right. no I, I i and i never seen them again but let me tell you what happened the next day right. the next day uh the caretaker and i were out here in the yard and we were talking about the incident, and there was a, it, it was either a crow or a, a not a buzzard, uh, what do you call it? Uh, raven? Uh, a raven. It looked like a raven, okay? okay yeah. It was uh, up on, I, I looked, and all of a sudden it was just there. It was up on this railing. Uh, we've got a, like a handicap ramp. And it was on the top of the the arm thing, the the handrail. Mm -hmm. And we have these little Yorkies out here, and we always watch for buzzards or any big birds or anything, because I'm always scared something's gonna dip down. And these little Yorkies are a little bitty. I'm afraid they're gonna dip down. And we have a fenced-in yard. This yard is fenced in, but and it's pretty pretty good size. But uh, I watch anyway because hawks and things fly down and get them. Well, I saw that and I told it. And it didn't look big enough like it could carry a dog off. It was just a regular size raven. Mm. Well, the next thing I see is it, uh, it flew outside the fence and got in front of our gate right there where you walk into the yard. And Robert and I walked out. We've got two gates. Well, we walked out the other gate. And I said, look at that thing. I said, is something wrong with it? I said, it's not flying or going on. It's just staying there. And he said, I know, it's weird, isn't it? And so we walked over to it and started shooting it. 
I said, oh, I think they think I had rabies or something. I said, it's not going on. Anyway, it started walking, and it was looking back behind it like it wanted us to follow it. So we did. It went into the woods in this trail that I have. I have a, like a little garden up in the woods here, a sitting garden. It went up in there. And we're following it. And all of a sudden, it disappears. And there is some underbrush and stuff there. I said, did it go in that underbrush? And I mean, oh, we're looking for it and everything. And all of a sudden, I don't know why, but I just hit my head like the top of a V8, like I wish I'd had a V8. And I said, it's in the yard. And me and him both took off running back to the yard, and that thing was attacking my dog. And I had to literally, and I have had hip surgery, but I tell you what, I ran and I took, I had to take my shoe off real quick and throw it, chunk it at it, to keep it from getting one of my dogs. And I hit it with the shoe. And when I did, it just flew right back and got to another dog. There was, there was three dogs out in the yard. It, it went and flew on to another dog. And I picked up a stick and threw it because I'm running and doing this at the same time, trying because I we were up in the woods and I had to run. You know, we were running back. The things were testing the dog. Well, finally, I got up to it, and do you know I had to kick that thing off of my dog? I kicked it as hard as I could, and that thing took off and it flew, but it didn't go anywhere. It flew up here and got landed on the fence post. I told Robert, go get the gun. I said, this thing, uh, something's wrong with this thing. I don't know what it is. It's weird. Anyway, yeah. he went in the house, got the gun, come back, and you know, he shot that thing, I don't know how many times, and it did not do nothing but sit there and look at us. And yeah, we yeah. felt helpless. We were like, what are we going to do? Anyway, I got the dogs in the house, come back out, it's still sitting there. Didn't die, <laughs> nothing. So, so what was he I shooting? Huh? What was he shooting with? I think he had a twenty-two. Okay. But I'm telling you, was he right there? It? it was in our yard. I mean, he shot it like right there, like at close range. Okay. You could see the feathers flying, and the thing did not die. Finally, I said, "Empty the gun in it," and he just kept shooting it. And finally, it flew onto a stump out there. And he, do you know, he shot probably half of a, a thing of bullets, shells, and that. Uh, and it finally jumped off the stump and walked off. Just kept walking, 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 walked out into the woods, and I saw it fall. I said, it fell over. I said, I think it died. Maybe it's dead. And we, we were having an argument over who was the, I said, you're the man. You go look. And he said, no, you go look. We were going to go see if it, it. Anyway, we were both scared to go out there. And we're not scared of nothing out here. It never has been. Did you ever go look? Did you go look? Yes, I went and looked, and it was gone. Okay. Well, I mean, if you shot it that many times, that's weird that it would just walk off. I mean, that sounds kind of like the thing that was you you were talking about that didn't fly. You never seen nothing. One of them things you saw fly, did you? No. And do you know I did not pick up on that until. Probably a few months later, we were sitting out here and got to talking about that on the porch. And I said, you know what? I think that thing marked into that bird and was trying, and, and that deal that I saw on that road, I think it marked into that, that bird. I do. Yeah. And it, and it, it comes to my house. Even when the cop went out there, he saw just a black bird, right? Exactly. Yes. Just one black bird. And uh -huh. so, so this raven that you were shooting at that was attacking your dogs, was it black also? Solid black. My goodness. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. That's and incredible. It was your, I, I, I've never in my life encountered anything like that. I, I've, I mean, the thing should have died with one shot. Right. But he shot it a, such a time. And you could even see the feathers flying off of it, but it wouldn't die. And it just kept sitting there staring at us. <laughs> like, you're not going to see me. So this is another common occurrence that I see in a lot of cryptid cases, whether it be um, shapeshifter type creatures or just dogmen. Um, there's a common theme of them getting shot many times, fur flying everywhere. Um, the uh, Sherman Ranch investigation uh, talks about a wolf getting shot and not dying, even though fur is flying everywhere. So it's definitely interesting. Um, Makes you wonder if it's some sort of extra 
paranormal entity or if it's humans who have, you know, perhaps done some sort of dark witchcraft or maybe even what we know as aliens. Um, it could also be some sort of uh, ethereal being making itself visible on the physical plane. Um, maybe the feathers flying and the fur flying is just some sort of illusion or some kind of automatic response that our brains create when we know we're supposed to shoot something and that's what's supposed to happen but um who knows it's it's really really weird really interesting my goodness <laughs> that's it that's incredible my caretaker after a couple of days he said well i got something to tell you and i said what and he said i saw that too up there on that road i said you did i said why didn't you tell me and he said i just didn't think you, nobody would believe me and he said, I just, I don't know. I didn't know how to tell you. And I said, I tell you what, you draw me a picture of what you saw, and I'm going to draw you a picture of what I saw. And he drew his, and I drew mine, and we shared pictures, and it was the same exact thing. The do do same you still thing. have those? Those drawings? Huh? Do you still have those drawings? Yes. Yeah. Can you send me a picture of those? I do, or we can draw them over because I know exactly what mine looks like, and he does too. <laughs> yeah, well, I mean, if you got both of those pictures, I would like to see the comparison too. Send send me the, yeah. all the pictures that you got there. Um, yeah, that, okay. I would because I might do a painting and stuff of, of it too for the thumbnail, and, and you know. Yeah, well, he told me that he was coming through there in the pickup one day. This is about three weeks before I saw it, and he said that. It stepped out. Well, he saw it on the on the tower too, doing that chanting and stuff. Because I asked him, I said, "What did what were they doing?" And he told the same exact. He said, "I don't know. They were hopping around like weird, like like jumping around, hopping around." I said, "Did it seem evil to you?" He said, "Very." He came home. He didn't get encountered when he just saw that. He came home and got his gun and went back up there, and they were still there. And he said this human or this human one, he it came out. He didn't see it fly either. It just appeared to him in the middle of the road. He got right in front of his truck in the middle of the road, like stopped him. And he got out of his truck with his gun. And he yeah. said he didn't say a word, but he saw it in his mind. He said, "Does it have hands? What in the world?" And he said that that thing put his hands out in front of him and said, "Yes, I have hands." My told him. And uh and he said it had on red tennis shoes. I said, Come on. He said, Yeah. I said, well, I didn't see it at his feet, but he said, Yes, it it, it had on red tennis shoes. And see, what's weird though is our caretaker has red she had a pair of red tennis shoes. Has a pair of leather, solid, bright red tennis shoes. And hmm. I'm wondering if it wasn't mocking him or something. Hmm. I don't know. So I find this part particularly interesting and somewhat comical. Um, I think the whole fact that he was wearing the same shoes as that guy kind of hints at it being some sort of astral creature or some sort of creature that's not necessarily totally material um, and can shift and manipulate its form to whatever it wants. And it could possibly even, you know, pull information from whatever, whoever's, you know, in the vicinity, um, in order to play a joke. But he said it had on red tennis shoes. He said it was solid black. He named everything exactly like I did, but he said it had on red tennis shoes. I said, for real? I didn't see that, but he did. Wow. Did he shoot? No. He said it scared him so bad he didn't know what to do. He said he got back in his truck and come home. And he said he didn't know what to do. He didn't know what to say about it or anything. He said he didn't know. He didn't want to tell nobody, you know. Then that is not even all of it. I I had gotten to where I was going around. The, uh, we have a, like a horseshoe road. I was going around and coming back out on the other road to get to town. And I thought, you know, I'm not going to let that keep me because it was a lot longer way. And I thought, this is you know, crazy, I'm going to go down my road, you know, I'm not going to let this entity scare me about going down my road anymore, so I went, by there. I went on back down our road one day, this is probably a couple of months after this happened, and there was a man, the man that's the closest house to the tower, it's a little small 
like caretaker looking house to that ranch. And him and this other guy was working. He's an old black man. Well, him and this other guy was there working on the fence. And I stopped. And I asked her, I said, hey, have y'all seen anything weird going on on this tower out here? Like, I said, I hate to say, but anything weird? And the black man, he stopped what he was doing, and he walked over to my car, and he said, like, what? I said, have you seen anything? Because you live the closest to it. He said, what are you talking about? And I said, like, birds, like animal looking, uh, humanoid looking something, you know, like a bird, but huge, that has wings, but that has a man's face. And he said, well, yeah. He said, I didn't, but he said, my brother comes from Houston and stays the weekends with me sometimes. He said he came down here, he walked in the house, and he said he told me, he said he laughs real, laughs when he's real nervous. He mm -hmm. said he got to laughing. And he couldn't hardly really say what he wanted to say, and he kept laughing. And he said, I said, what is going on? He said, man, I'm going to have to leave. I'm going back to Houston. He said, I cannot stay here tonight. He said, why? And he said, that's something weird going on on that tower. He said, you've never seen it? He said, no. And he said, well, it is. And he said, I, I can't stay here. I, I just can't. And then he tried to, the, the brother tried to pull it out of him what it was. And he said, it's some bird-looking thing, man. He said, I'm telling you, I'm going back to Houston right now. He left. He never come back. He never spent another weekend here, and he won't even talk about it to the, the brother over the phone or nothing. That's what he told me. Huh. Man, that sounds... Uh... So there's two other people that encountered this, you know, besides me. And, huh. and so I know two other people have seen it, but I have searched the Internet. I've searched videos, websites, everything. I can't find anything that looks exactly like what I saw. It was de it was demonic. I have no doubt. Yeah. But I don't yeah. find anything on it. You know, I'm just hoping that somebody can help me that maybe has seen the same thing or encountered something similar that might comment or something. Right. Yeah. Yeah. I believe it's demonic because the, the you know a lot of times in in the, in the scriptures that the um, demonic entities are referred to as the fowls of the air. You know, and uh, mm -hmm. the prince of the power there and things like that. But they're referred to as birds, you know, in a way. Uh, it's uh, very, very similar to that kind of description. But that is the, the most weird, unusual thing. It almost seems like a principality or something over that particular area. Is there any strange history or something that you know of that went on in that area? Uh, maybe Indian burial well, mound type stuff or anything like that? Oh, it really? used to be a cotton denting area right here. And our home, our place right here that we have is on the old slave quarters. This is where the old slave quarters houses were. Okay. And I have a lady uh, that lives uh, across the river from us. She's a, she's a, a black lady, and she has wrote, written a book on some family history of hers, and she did some research on this area. And she told me that there was a lot of black magic had been performed down in here okay. years back. Yeah, I, I don't know anything about that, but that that's all I know is that this was a, a plantation at one time, a cotton plantation, and actually this area that we're in right here and where the tower was or is and where I am now was the slave quarters' homes. Okay, so let's see that. That's what I'm saying. There's something that... Uh... Uh, is almost uh, voodoo-ish about that, uh, print, some type of principality or something that went on is tied to it in some kind of way. Um, that is very, very strange, very, very odd, that's for sure. And uh, It's almost like magic type thing, but, you know, something like that, but voodoo-ish, black magic, uh, folklore, I don't know. No, I'm it's just, that's, that's, ser it. that's serious stuff. Voodoo ain't no... Uh, I ain't no folklore. That's that's real. I mean, people that practice that are um, definitely um, can stir up some real demonic entities. And uh, but to, you know, to be in on the water tower in a circle and stuff that just screams of cultic uh, um, a witchcraft mm. kind of stuff. You know, um, in I a half know. moon circle. Tell me to leave it. I said, girl, you better leave it. She said, I'm telling you. She said that horseshoe that you live on, there's some black magic went on back there years ago, a lot of it. 
Well, I, I really appreciate yeah. you coming on and sharing that, and uh, and and I'll talk to you soon. So that's about the gist of it. It's a really strange story, and um, I don't really have any reason not to believe this Debbie woman. Um, you know, a lot of people think that people out in the country, they're, I don't know, they're just something in the water and they're seeing things. It's a very common excuse for people who don't really want to consider the fact that there could be things like this out there. Like I said, there's the possibility that it's humans using witchcraft, and it reminds me of the Native American stories of the shapeshifters who cover themselves in the bones of the animal uh, as in a powder, sort of like a paint, and they'll paint their entire bodies. Um, there's something to that. There's also, like I said, the possibility of what we call extraterrestrial involvement, and the demonic option is always there. It's a lot of weird stuff, um, so there's a lot to think about. It's obviously quite different from the Mothman case because Mothman has these glowing eyes, he's seen flying, a lot of people have reported it, um, but I really, really liked the way this lady told her story. It sounded genuine to me, and I really appreciate her coming on and talking about it. So if you have any ideas or if you've seen anything like that or heard of any other stories that you want to share or link me, definitely uh, let me know in the comments or hop in the Discord and share what you got. I really look forward to doing more videos on Brenton Sawin's collection. Um, I think it's really, really interesting and unique that he goes out and gets these interviews and kind of has his own biblical perspective on it. I think that's really cool. And um, yeah, I'm really looking forward to it. So if you guys have any suggestions for Cryptids Unveiled, like I said, hop in the Discord, let me know. But until then, May our minds be unveiled. Let go of everything you think to be true. Relax the mind and ask the question, do I truly understand what this reality is?